Hello everyone. In this lesson, we'll focus on literal equations. These are equations with variables or unknowns on both sides of the equality sign. Any formula is a literal equation. For example, the area of a triangle equals half the base times the height is a literal equation. Solving a literal equation is also called changing the subject of the formula. I'm going to hand over to Amashni to show you how it's done. Let's use a simple example to work out how to change the subject of a formula. We will use the formula to calculate the area of a triangle. Do you remember how to calculate the area of a triangle? Look at this diagram. Here, B represents the length of this side. H is the altitude and it is drawn from the vertex perpendicular to this side. Now can you write a formula for the area of this triangle? One form of the formula is that A is equal to H times B all divided by 2 where A represents the area. B is a side and H is the perpendicular height from a vertex to side B. You might also recognize this formula as Area equals half of the base times height. Do you see that there are three unknowns here? Do you think that we could solve this equation if we had two of the values of the unknowns? For example, if A equals 30 meters squared and H equals 6 meters, could you solve for B? Let's substitute these values in and see. I know that A is equal to 30. We want to find B, and I know that H is 6. Remember, to solve for B means write an equation that states B is equal to some number. So let's see what we can get. Half of 6 is 3, so I can write 30 is equal to 3B. Now I want to solve for 1B, which means I need to divide by 3 on the side. Remember, this is an equation. We must always keep the balance. Whatever I do on the one side of the equation, I must do on the other side of the equation. So I need to divide by 3. Therefore, 30 divided by 3 gives me 10, which is equal to 3 cancels off with this 3, and we're left with 1, and I'm left with 1b. In other words, 10 is equal to Another way of solving this equation would be to change the subject of the formula at the start. Let's use this formula as an example. A is equal to H times B divided by 2. Now in this form, A is written on its own, which means that A is the subject of the formula. We could also say that A is written in terms of the other unknowns. Now let's solve for B. To solve for B, I need to try to get B on its own which means I need to multiply both sides by 2. I get 2a is equal to h times b. Now I need to get rid of the h. To do this, I divide by h. Whatever I do on the one side of the equation, I must do on the other side. So I divide by h. Therefore, 2 times a divided by h is equal to b. So you see, B is written on its own on one side, which means that B is the subject of the formula. Let's check if our answer matches with the one we got previously. We know that A is 30 meters squared. We know that H is 6 meters. So substitute these values here. We get 2 times 30 divided by 6 is equal to B. Simplifying this, we get 2 times 30, which is 60. And 60 divided by 6 gives me 10. So my answer is, therefore, 10 is equal to B. Remember that we must always check that these values for B and H do in fact give us an area of 30 square meters. Now for another example. In the United States, temperature is measured in degrees Fahrenheit. While in South Africa, 
we use degrees Celsius. This formula is used when we want to convert degrees Celsius, represented by C, to degrees Fahrenheit, represented by F. If you are watching an American movie and they mentioned there that the temperature was 68 degrees Fahrenheit, you could use this formula to calculate the equivalent temperature in degrees Celsius. So to convert to degrees Celsius, we must make C the subject of the formula. Let's have a look. Now I see here that we have plus 32. I want to get C on its own on this side of the equation. So I start off by subtracting 32 from both sides of the equation. I get F minus 32 is equal to 9C divided by 5 plus 32 minus 32. So we are left with F minus 32 is equal to 9C divided by 5. Now I have a fraction here. I want to make this equation simpler. To do this, I multiply by 5 over 1. But whatever I do to one side of the equation, I must do to the other side of the equation. But we've got to be careful here. There are two terms, which means I must multiply 5 to both of these terms. So multiplied by 5 divided by 1. This simplifies to 5 times f minus 32 which is equal to, here we have 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 5 once, and I'm left with 9C. Now, we want to make C the subject of the formula, so I need to divide by 9 on both sides. Here, 9 goes into 9 once, and 9 goes into 9 once. I'm left with 5 times F minus 32 divided by 9, is equal to C. Now, we know that the temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's substitute our value for F into the formula. We know that F is 68 degrees, so I can write 5 times 68 minus 32 divided by 9 is equal to C. Now 68 subtract 32 gives me 36, so I can write 5 times 36 divided by 9 is equal to C. Now 9 goes into 9 once, 9 goes into 36 4 times, so this simplifies to 5 times 4 is equal to C. C is equal to 20 degrees Celsius. Now we know that 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the USA is equivalent to 20 degrees Celsius here at home. I hope you have a better understanding of literal equations now. So I think it's time to try a slightly harder example. Try this one. Make R the subject of the formula. V is equal to pi R squared H. When you look at the variable, ask yourself what is it joined to and how is it joined. Then use the opposite operation on both sides of the equation to strip away the terms you don't want. Let me show you how. I can see that the r squared is joined to the pi and the h by multiplication. So to get the r by itself, I need to divide both sides by the pi and the h. I am still left with r squared, and I need this to just be r. To get rid of the squared, I will square root both sides. The square root of r squared is r. Therefore, we have made r the subject of the formula r is equal to the square root of v divided by pi times h. You will come across this formula again in the section on volume and surface area, and hopefully by then you will be able to solve for any of the variables. That's it for now, grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Equations and Inequalities task video. You'll also be able to learn more about equations on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.